So let's go on to one of these head scratchers. So this is my favorite form. This is revenue-based finance. Uh, I literally wrote the book on it. Uh, as far as I know, there's only one book that covers this uh, so far. Uh, back to our framework, uh, you provide some money to the, uh, to the company and they're promising to pay you back some money. It's nice. Uh, and how they determine that? Well, it's a percentage of their revenue. And typically it's a fixed amount of money, not a fixed amount of time. Uh, and so again, when we're looking at the terms, those are the, really the only two terms that really matter. Uh, you can add all the other preferences on the end, but what percentage of revenue do you get as an, as an, uh, sorry, as an investor? What percentage of, of revenue does the company share with you as an investor or as a group of investors? And what is your total return, cash on cash? If I put in $100,000, do I get back 150, 180, 200, 225? Like what's, what's my multiple is usually how we'll talk about this. This is one of my slides from my longer presentation. So again, you can see this on the left. 2X is usually where it winds up being in terms of uh, cash on cash, lots of doublings. Uh, and then you can form this, you can structure this legally as something that looks like debt or something that looks like equity or something that doesn't look like either of the two. That's just a revenue share. Um, in the equity form, you can have some upside. You can add warrants to this. You can make the payments optional or mandatory. You can change the time period. And then you can add in every other preference that's used in, uh, in both debt and equity onto these deals. So they can get really complicated if you want, or they can be really simple. And I'll show you one in a second here. Uh, or yeah, literally one second. So here's a real deal. Hot off the press, this, these terms were written yesterday. This is a screenshot from the spreadsheet from yesterday. So I got one of my fledglings, won't tell you which one. Uh, they, uh, they, they just launched, uh, they just got their, their, latest, um, uh, their latest facility up and running because of the pandemic, we're about six months late. Uh, and so we need a little bit more money. Uh, we don't wanna sell more equity because we just did a series A, we sold a bunch of equity. We, the founder doesn't wanna be diluted right now. We're on the cusp of making a huge amount of money in terms of revenues. Um, we've tried to get a loan from a bank and that didn't work because the company has no track record yet. And so we said, all right, let's try a revenue-based uh, a revenue-based raise. So here are the terms. Like this is the this is the term sheet. We are, he's raising a half million dollars. Uh, Five percent of revenue gets shared. There's a two x multiple and therefore a total return of a million dollars. Uh, here's the estimated payments. So here's the estimated revenues. And so this is 5% of the previous quarter's revenues. Uh, so $500,000 goes in, um, hopefully by March 31st. Uh, and then here would be the payments back out to the investors. That adds up to a million dollars. Here's the cumulative sum. So you can go and scan down here and say, okay, so it takes two years before the, or slightly less than two years before the, the we call it the principal, I guess. The original money is repaid. Um, debt investors often think about principal and interest. Equity investors don't. So here would be, we get, we get to break even is how I would think of this, you know, in January of 2023, but we don't get the payment until March because it's quarterly payments. Uh, and so that in that third year, we get most of the money back. That's just how companies go. Uh, and then if you compute the internal rate of return, what would this be? If we did a loan for the same amount of, uh, of cash flow, what would the loan be? And the answer is 12.2%. So this happens to be a, a company started overseas that just moved to the States. And so in terms of US funding, 12% is a good return. In terms of African funding, it's a little low. For, for this kind of cash flow, the IRR should be a little higher. Uh, and then ROI is in return on investment is two. And so that is really just calculating uh, this number and that number, just to make sure that it matches. So you get two. It doesn't have to be two. It could be one and a half. I've seen concessionary deals down to like 1.2. Uh, one and a half is not uncommon in growth. Uh, 1.8 is not uncommon in growth. I really haven't seen too many deals above two, um, but it, it, they have happened. So where would you do this? Okay, well, how about in Chicken Basket? Chicken Basket is the biggest producer of chickens in Western Kenya, biggest processor of chickens in Western Kenya. Uh, based in Kisumu, uh, we talked about that in the warm up, third biggest city in Kenya, a uh, very large population out in Western Kenya, but not a lot of uh, manufacturing and, and uh, production out there. 
it's mostly farmland. Uh, so what Chicken Basket does is uh, they sell chicks feeds and medicines to farmers in batches of 100. And then they buy back the fully grown chickens and process them and sell them restaurants, hotels, uh, and a, a chain of restaurants that they've started. So uh, we did do a little bit of equity investing in this company, but ultimately this, this founder, he wants to own the company. He, he, he likes the control. He, likes, he loves this company. It's growing really fast. Uh, and so this is a great, great company where you know, they're pretty much doubling year over year or getting close to doubling year over year. Um, they're just about to crack a million dollars in revenue this year. This is the kind of company that has so much cash flowing around that they can afford and, and decent margins. And so they can afford to carve off four, five, six, seven percent of their revenues uh, and share them with investors and double them, double the money in for investors. And the risk is pretty low to investors that, that they'll get paid back. So it just kind of, in, in terms of feel, we don't have to worry about, well, who's going to buy a chicken company in Western Kenya? Again, there's, no, there's been no acquisitions ever in the history of Kasumu. So if we were going to bet on that, that would be a bad bet. Instead, we're just betting on the, on the revenues growing in this company. That'd be a good bet. Uh, in terms of who else does these things, uh, I learned about uh, revenue-based investing from a company happened to be here in Seattle called Lighter Capital. This is the most prolific revenue-based investor on the planet. Uh, and if you scroll down, which I can't do because it's a screenshot, uh, but uh, I think they said they've done $200 million of revenue-based investment so far. Uh, and they list how many deals that is and whatnot. And so in, that, in the world of revenue-based investing, that's huge. In the world of venture capital, it's tiny. Uh, and Lighter Capital only does revenue-based loans I do revenue-based equity. I run the, the most prolific revenue-based equity fund on the planet uh, through Fledge. Joe, you want to add anything to that? No, I thought you summarized it well. I mean, I, I think uh, revenue-based financing is really interesting and it's helpful and it doesn't, uh, it's like you said, um, this, uh, this idea that, you know, forcing uh, founders toward an exit, I mean, it's perceived as, you know, negative and not a good fit in a lot of places. So this is a good alternative for that. And, that and, sort of uh, Remind me, is Earnest Capital something revenue-based too? Yeah, so Earnest Capital um, is a really interesting company and they created their own instrument called a SEAL, okay, a SEAL. And what it stands for is Shared Earnings Agreement. I know, it's, it's, I know, it's, I, <laughs> where does the, I know, I know, where's the L come from? But um, yeah, no, Tyler Tring is a super creative person, very real, I think he's a great writer, really good follow on Twitter. If you're looking for someone who's really creative and thoughtful, I think interesting person, but yeah, he created a thing called the seal. And basically what it does is it attempts to, in, uh, in his view, align investor and founder incentives, because the way it works is, um, you know, the, there is a return on the instrument, but not until there's uh, earnings uh, for the founder above a certain amount. Oh, that's right. Um, and then there's a sharing, there's a sharing of it. And it does, I think it does reside um, in sort of the nebulous area as well from a tax point of view. I mean, what is that kind of instrument? What is it from a tax? Point of view who you know it's i think it's a little uncertain yeah but, we've, we've uh, had but, those you know. discussions in in my world with my stuff you know i call it revenue-based equity i think it's equity irs hasn't told us that it's equity yeah no it's same same story but yeah i like the seal um yeah and then yeah anyway please and, and please joe knows joe knows this because he's he's the uh he's the lawyer for that firm yeah we created the seal so i mean yeah. Uh, yeah, that was something we we we. Right, I'll, I'll make a slide for that for the evening session. All right, um, <laughs> moving on. Okay.